Nike reported earnings this week and results were really bad, which is what we expected based on the guidance after last quarter. They were expecting revenue to be down about 10%. That's exactly what we saw from the results. But things were even worse and the stock was actually down a little bit this week. Now that we've had a few days to process it, this, I do want to go back to Nike's results and give an idea of where the company is headed from here and then also compare it to some stocks that I like much better than Nike, in particular, On Holding and Decker's Outdoor. On obviously makes on, and then Decker's makes the Hoka shoes. That's really one of their most popular shoes. They make a bunch of other brands like Ugg and Tiva as well. But when you look at the numbers between those two companies, it is striking how much bigger Nike is. So I want to dig into all that today. My name is Travis Hoyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. Let's first look at the results from Nike. And the baseline here is that everything was down. This is, we start with revenues, $11.6 billion, down 10% from a year ago. Nike Direct, so this is gonna be where they're gonna be going direct to consumers, particularly the app, where a lot of people are buying products now. I know that's where I shop for Nikes. That was down 13% to $4.7 billion. The big problem with this is Nike Direct is what Nike invested a lot in during the pandemic. They basically said, hey, we don't wanna rely on wholesalers anymore, those retail stores where we would typically go, go and buy Nikes, really since the company was founded. We wanna now take that relationship direct to consumers, try to take some margin back, and maybe also get some growth as well. But that's not going particularly well because that's down 13%. Wholesale actually holding up reasonably well on a comparative basis, down 8%. If we go down here to the income statement, the big thing is their demand creation expense was actually up about 15%. So that's not gonna do well for the bottom line. Overhead expenses were down. They did have some cost cutting. But on the bottom line, net income down 28% to just over a billion dollars in the quarter. Not a lot of good trends for Nike. But let's put this into context to some of these other companies. How big is Nike? This is just the footwear segment. And I wanna just throw up this chart. Nike, over the past 12 months, has generated $32.5 billion worth of revenue making shoes. On holding, getting to be a pretty popular brand, just $2.1 billion in revenue. The Hoka brand, just $1.9 billion in revenue. So you could look at this one of two ways. You could look at this as Nike is in decline and these two companies are growing. Based on this chart, this is since the beginning of 2023 and these are trailing 12 month numbers. Nike's revenue in footwear is basically flat. So over that period of time, On's compound annual growth rate 34%, Hoka's compound annual growth rate 28%. So both of those companies are taking market share at a really rapid rate, but from a very, very small base. It, so is Nike able to just get a little bit of that market share back? That could be a huge win for Nike and a huge loss for those companies. On the other hand, if Nike's decline continues and the growth rate for these two companies continue, this is where there's tremendous upside, especially in shoes and apparel. And it doesn't just come from, from shoes. The weakness that we have seen at Nike is gonna bleed over into other segments of their business. Before I move on from Nike, I do wanna highlight some of their other numbers as well because Nike really starts with shoes. They'll start with North America, $3.2 billion in revenue, down 14%. So losing share, pretty dramatically in North America, but look at this apparel business. A little over a third the size of the footwear business, and then equipment is a pretty sizable business, $283 million, but not real big. You go down to other parts of the world, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, again, declines, but you're getting similar numbers, about half the size for the apparel business. Greater China, not a big apparel business, but it's not just about shoes, it's about apparel as well. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. I'm gonna start with On looking at these two. On is the company that I'm extremely bullish on in this space, but look at this chart. This is On's shoe, apparel, and accessories revenue. So shoe revenue growing really tremendously. That's the same number that I talked about earlier, about $1.9 billion in shoe revenue over the past 12 months. They're expecting that to grow at about a 30% compound annual rate, at least for the next couple of years. But look at the apparel revenue. So Nike is generating between 25 and 50% of shoe revenue as apparel revenue. So not as big a business, but it is still a pretty sizable business. You look at On and it's basically nothing. So they have potential upside 
of nearly a billion dollars per year, I would say, probably even more than that when you start to account for the growth that on shoes will have. That's where I think things get really troubling for Nike is because if on and Hoka brands like that are starting to make inroads with shoes, what's the next thing that they're going to do? They're going to start making apparel. And now people are going to be wearing on shoes and running shorts and running shirts. You just start to lose niche after niche after niche. And those niches, especially in fashion and sporting goods, typically start with one thing and then it expands to other parts of the business. So this is where I see both a threat for Nike and an opportunity for on holding, if these same trends continue. Now Hoka doesn't break out the same numbers for things like apparel, but we know that the shoes is about the same size as on holdings for now. But again, these two brands are gonna take a pretty similar strategy and they have a lot of the same wholesale relationships that Nike has. I think this is one of the things that's been striking as, striking as you go to a place like Dick's Sporting Goods. Nike used to be one of the major brands there. I was at one of their newer design stores recently and Hoka is really highlighted heavily. That was actually the first place that I saw on apparel. So on big presence and they're starting to get some of those new products as well. And why wouldn't you, if you're a company like Dick's, On and Hoka are growing as a business. So this is where you're in kind of a catch 22 if you're Nike. You've kind of given wholesale partners the stiff arm over the past few years. Now your revenue is declining. Now you, want, now you have to go back to those partners and you have to say, hey, you know what? We want to be better partners in the future. We want a little bit more shelf space. We want some more promotion. And they come back and they say, that's great, but we have these brands over here that are actually growing and are growing naturally and we're going to ride their tailwinds because they didn't give us this stiff arm. In fact, they grew their business online first and now we're coming more into wholesale. So I think that's the fundamental challenge for Nike. And as an investor, I think this is where momentum and opportunity is extremely important. Yes, companies like Deckers and On Holdings are typically going to be more expensive than a company like Nike but the upside is much, much higher. On, for example, would have to grow their revenue more than 10X, about 15X, to get to the size of Nike's shoe business. That just shows you what the upside for On Holding is. Even if they only take 10% of Nike's shoe business, even if they grow at 10 or 20% over the next decade, that will be a phenomenal win for investors. They don't have to destroy all of Nike's business. They just need to take a little more chunk of it year after year after year. Same thing goes for Decker's Outdoor. That's a little bit more of a diversified business, so you're getting much more exposure to things like Uggs, which is still bigger than the Hoka brand. But I think you're gonna see similar things, just taking market share slowly but surely from a company like Nike. So can Nike recover? Sure, the company will be fine, they will exist long-term. But is this gonna be a growth stock? I don't think that's gonna be the case. And if you're interested in shoes and in apparel, I would bet on the growing brands. I like on holding the best, but a company like Decker's Outdoor also was really well positioned. And Nike's results just showed what a really tough position that they're in. But let me know what you think about Nike and about those two other stocks, on holding and Decker's Outdoor. Ticker symbol on those is O-N-O-N -O -N and D-E-C-K. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.